Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel and look who I've got here with me. He's a bit cross because I was sitting on the chair over there with him asleep on my knee and I woke him up to bring him over here and I'm making him dance. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Anyway, um, I don't know how long he'll stay there. Um, this is a little video which I wanted to share with you some of the things I got up to when I was in England. Um, I was there primarily to deliver my work for the exhibition with my group CQ West, which will be on in Nailsworth in Gloucestershire, um, opening the 30th of April, and it's on until the 12th of May. And I'll be there in the gallery on the Thursday, the 10th of May, no, sorry, the Friday, the 10th of May, and the Sunday, the 12th of May. So that's Friday, the 10th, and Sunday, the 12th. Um, I'll put all the, the details in writing down in the description, including when I'm there, um, so if any of you are in that area, it would be lovely to meet you in person, so to speak. Fred Fred won't be there. He'll stay here in France and be in charge of everybody else. Um, so, um, yeah, so we had a meeting. Uh, my group, CQ West, we had our AGM, actually. Now you can only see his ears, which is a bit disconcerting. <laughs> go down, Fred Fred. Either come up or go down, because you look strange for the people. Should I hold you like that? Um... So, yeah, so we had our AGM, and um, the news is, um, I, let me just rewind slightly. I was a founder member of CQ. We founded the group 11 years ago, um, and it's a group of textile artists now. Originally, we were all quilters, and the group was affiliated to the Quilters Guild of the British Isles, the contemporary arm, which is where the CQ comes from. Um, it stands for Contemporary Quilters. And um, the group was founded... Um, by a very good friend of mine who I always stay with when I'm in England, Chrissy, um, And she was chair, the original chairperson. Um, and then later on, I can't remember exactly the years, but I served as chair for two years. Um, <clears throat> and then in recent years, it's become quite um, a big task for one single person to manage as chair. So it was suggested by another member of ours that we try um, a group chair. And... That's worked very well over the last few years. We've had a three-legged chair, so three people as chair. Anyway, the big news is that you are now looking at one of the legs of the new CQ West chair. So I'm going to serve two years as joint chair, along with Chrissy um, and another very good friend of mine called Stephanie. Um, so, yeah. So now you have to curtsy when you see me. No, I'm joking. Um, so, yeah, that was that was wonderful um, to have the, the confidence of the group like that. So... Um, that's the CQ news. Um, Exhibition-wise, that's all. All the planning's going well, as I said. Um, and he's woken up again. He's bored. Um, but while I was there, apart from having to go to that meeting, or having to, you know, going to that meeting and catching up with everybody, um, I also managed to get, take in another exhibition in the town of Salisbury in Wiltshire at the Salisbury Museum. And it was all about uh, making fashion from recycled items or um, mending, you know, mending things or remaking things. Fred, Fred, I don't really want your tail up my nose, thank you. Oh gosh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, about, um, <laughs> that's not very... <laughs> Fred, Fred, can you... Thank you. He's sitting now behind the camera. Hopefully he'll stay there. Uh, yes, it was about, what was it about? I can't even remember. Oh, yes, I know. It was It was about um, mending and altering garments, and that's through the ages. There were some quite old garments. Uh, I went with uh, Chrissy, my friend Chrissy, who I stayed with, as I said, to uh, another friend of ours, Maria, Maria Harriman, who is a textile artist, but she's also a printmaker with lino cutting. And um, I've got her book here. <coughs> Um, she's got an exhibition, <coughs> sorry about that, um, she's got an exhibition in the West Berkshire Museum in Newbury, which is in Berkshire, um, unsurprisingly, since it's called the West Berkshire Museum. And Chrissy and I went to help Maria hang that exhibition, so I did a video of that for you as well, which was, I really wanted to share it with you, A, because Maria is a very good friend of mine and a wonderful artist, and B, because um, there's a log cabin um, done in a little bit of a different style to, to conventionally. So I thought you'd all like to see that. 
Um, and then the other thing I want to show you, which I'll do right at the end on the desk, uh, the few bits and bobs that I bought when I was there, and also I made a stitch meditation scroll when I was there. Um, so I want to share that with you because I went foraging in my friend Chrissy's studio and got lots of her lovely little scraps of cloth that she's dyed and printed herself. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. Um, and uh, made a scroll. So wait till the end and I'll show you all that and I hope you enjoy the exhibition tours. There it is. Okay, so this is my friend and colleague Maria Harriman's exhibition at the Berkshire Museum at the Wharf in Newbury in Berkshire. Um, I'll put the details in the description box below. The exhibition's entitled Life is Not Still, a Florilegium of the Kennet and Avon Canal. And I'll just pause here on the information board in case you want to um, pause your screen so that you can read it um, fully. I thought you'd be especially interested in the textiles. Um, I'll just do a quick pan round. I'll try not to make you dizzy um, of the entire space. It's on until the 14th of April. Um, and you see there already, some of you will have spied, and there's Maria herself. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Maria's also in our private Facebook group, um, Maria Harriman. So if you want to go and look there, she's been sharing some of her weekly slow stitch projects. Um, but she's also a printmaker. So she's been um, stitching the pieces and then using them in her printmaking work, which isn't something I have a lot of technical knowledge about. Um, but they're beautiful, I do know that. Um, so I'll just show you this wonderful log cabin. Um, try not to get my shadow in the way. And each panel, each hearth square, if you like, is a lino print of a different plant that she's observed growing alongside the canal, um, the Kennet and Avon Canal in the west of England. I'll just show you one up in close. Let's show you Slows, the fruit of the blackthorn. And it's all hand stitched. And you see the print of the, the slow berries on the bush. And then written down below are some of the things that she calls word poems. No, what do you call them, Maria? Pen portraits. Pen portraits. And she has a lovely book as well, which I'll show you in a minute. I've got a copy. Um, I'll show you some of the details of that, where she not only sketches what she sees, but she also writes a kind of a word sketch that she calls a pen poet. Pen poem? Pen <laughs> I can't get pen portrait. <laughs> Um, so that's the log cabin. I'm all out of sequence because there is a sequence. Uh, the exhibition follows the Roman calendar, which begins in March. Sorry about the shadows, can't do anything about the lighting. So this painting here, you see the word March written alongside the, um, the, the pot that the plants are standing in. So those are some of the plants that, that will be around in March. And then this triptych, a lino prints, again from Maria's own original sketches of the plants. And this is March, April and May. And then here's another beautiful painting. I love this painting. And then the next piece is another textile piece. It's lovely to see paintings and lino prints alongside textile art, I think because textile art is often not given the same status in the art world as other media. And um, I think Maria demonstrates here all the different media together um, that textile art truly does deserve a place along with other forms of art. Beautiful Bright's piece. And then there's the lino prints for June, July and August. I'll go in a little bit closer. So you can have a good look. <laughs> Maria's chosen the colours behind the lino prints to match an element of the plant. And um, my particular favourite is coming up in a minute. There's another triptych, which is September, October and November. And the final triptych, which is December, January and February. I'm looking at Maria to see if I'm right. <laughs> The middle piece there with the, the mulberry purpley coloured background is older. Now, if anyone's watched me for any amount of time, you'll know I love my alders and you'll know that the mother alder in my woodlands is where my lost bundle is currently residing. And the buds of the alder before it bursts into leaf are that colour exactly of purple that Maria's got there. 
So I was really thrilled to see that. And then in the glass cabinet here, I'll go around the other side because I think the light's better. Are some of, no, now you can see me, hello. Are some of Maria's sketchbooks and notes and some of the tools that she uses for her lino cutting. Um, I'll pan down slowly so you don't get dizzy. It's another one of her beautiful sketchbooks. And then at the bottom are some of the books that she used as inspiration for her work. Um, a little sewing needle case, silco thread, thimble. Marie uses a thimble apparently, or everybody knows that I don't. I don't know how you can Because I've got iron fingers, Marie, <laughs> <laughs> and I only stitch nice soft cloth. Um, the log cabin again. I'll just go right back so you can get a good look at that because I think that's probably what most of you will be most interested in. Absolutely beautiful. And the final piece that I didn't show you. And admire how straightly it's hung because I hung it. <laughs> is this piece here. So thanks so much for watching. If you can get to Newbury in the... Um, southwest of England, south of England, <clears throat> in Berkshire. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in the throat. Um, do come along and see. It's on until the 14th of April. West and like Berkshire I said, Museum. the West Berkshire Museum at the Wharf in Newbury. I'll put all the details down in the description. Any more questions, just ask me and I can let you know the details. So this is um, Maria's book called Life Is Not Still Two. This is her second um, series along the Kennet and Avon Canal. Um, I'll just show you a little bit inside. Um, I'll put a link to Maria's Instagram um, down below as well if you want to go and look there. Um, that's where she shares most of her art. Yeah, I mark this page March since we're in March just. This is one of her, do you know why I still can't remember what they're called, pen portrait? Yes, I think it's called a pen portrait. Um, so March, she's written, Georgian buildings and gardens spill down the hill to meet the far bank. An ornate chimney, all that remains of the pump house. Water cascades noisily and river gulls cry, competing with the noises of the city. The deep locks are embroidered, plush green mosses and ferns. Sunshine, rain and winds tussle for priority. Churned up water has a reddish tinge, caution, cross currents. Last night's gales have shaken the aspen catkins from the trees, swollen and pomegranate red. They float on the water surface like festival garlands. And it's, yeah, it's a lovely book. I don't know if it's available mail order. Possibly not. Um, anyway, Maria will be able to tell you uh, if you go to her Instagram and you're interested. Um, but if you're in, you know, the southern part of England, like I said, it's well worth a visit the West Berkshire Museum in Newbury. So that was that. Um, I'll just show you this quickly on screen. This is our poster for Unfolding Story 6, which will be in Nailsworth, um, like I said, from the 30th of April till the 12th of May. Um, I'll put a link to our website, CQ West, and there you'll find all this information. Um, and also, like I said, down in the description, I will confirm that I am in the gallery myself on Friday the 10th and Sunday the 12th of May. Um, so that's that. So I've just got a few bits here to show you. Um, here's my little scroll that I talked about in the introduction. This button here is from one of Chrissy's button boxes and it's actually one of her grandmother's button. And Chrissy gave me this wooden scroll, uh, the wooden spool, sorry, as well. Um, and I'll just show you my scroll. I stitched this mostly while I was there. I did a little bit more stitching on it last night. Um, so there's some vintage lace and all or most of these cloths have all been dyed or printed by Chrissy. Um, so it's a little memento of my, my week with her. I did a lot of straight stitching, I did some cross stitches, some French knots, um, more cross stitches, uh, some quite big crosses there over this lovely bit of lace that was... Um, you know, it's like linked ovals with just a single thread in between where I stitched the cross. So there you go. There's my scroll and I've just stitched it onto the spool, you know, so it's permanently on there. I love these spools where they go in rather than the Silco ones, you know, like those which are... Those are lovely as well, but I, these are, for me, treasure. 
re these are quite treasury. Those are ultimate treasure. So there's my scroll. Um, the other things I bought, there's a shop in the town where Chrissy lives which sells vintage um, crafty stuff. So I got all these lovely threads. Some of them are anchor, some are DMC, um, some are of an unknown brand. But they're all stranded cottons um, and they were, I think they were two for 50 pence. So I got a good load of those. Um, I also got some buttons. I didn't get very many buttons. There were some places where you could buy, you know, you had to choose all your buttons and pay per button, which wasn't, it was only pennies, but still I was with uh, Chrissy and another friend of us, Cara, and I didn't like to hold them up with choosing buttons. So I just got a little bag of, um, you know, a mixed bag of buttons. So they're just buttons, but there's some quite nice ones in here, some mother of pearl. These are leathered, leather covered with the shank which are nice on pouches because then you can wind around, you know, it's much easier to wind a cord around them. Um, some sort of fake leather ones, I think they're plastic, but they're quite nice. Uh, you know, just buttons, buttony buttons. I was running low and I like this because they're all sort of more my colours, natural colours, and a random crystal bead in there as well. So there's my buttons. <clears throat> I also bought this necklace, which I've since taken apart. Maybe I should have left it as a necklace. So it was a big chunky necklace. It had these huge beads. I think there's a couple of those. And then it had all these um, discs. And this is wood with gold edges. And they've got one hole in the middle where they were threaded. But they've got all these, it's all different sizes of disc. I think I paid 50p for this. But you know, look right down to these teeny tiny little ones. And then there's some flatter ones. So that was, you know, it's worth looking thinking a little bit outside the box if you go looking for buttons, old necklaces or you know necklaces with interesting things on that you can use. Um, so those would make nice closures for pouches and things. I've probably got enough there to last me a while. Um, the other thing I got that was in the same shop and they came in this box are some little wooden letter stamps and there are only 24. I counted them um, and then the lady knocked the price down from cheap to even cheaper because they're too missing. And when we got back, we went through, I think the P and the, I can't remember what the other letter is that's missing. Anyway, I've got all the vowels and all the common consonants, so I was quite pleased with that. They're quite cute. Um, so that's those. <coughs> I got this book, How to Dress an Old Fashioned Doll. Sorry, it's glary because it's shiny. We were talking about making clothes after uh, going to the Salisbury exhibition of, you know, the repurposed and, and altered clothes and so on. I must apologise, I did actually video it, but when I checked the video, it was unwatchable. Um, so I'm sorry I haven't included that, but I'll put the link down below to the, the Salisbury website and there's lots of information there about it and photographs and so on. So you can go and have a look at that if you're not in, you know, that part of England to go and see it in real life. That is also on till the 12th of May, so if you are around there, it's on for quite a long time. Anyway, we're talking about making clothes, and then I saw this about dressing a doll, um, because I should have shown you this first, really. My friend Wendy gave me this fabulous book for me to make a journal out of. She was giving some books to a um, charity shop, and this is already falling to pieces. Um, and it's such a lovely size, and it's got wonderful photographs in it. So she gave it to me, it's very kind of her. Um, but in here, I probably won't be able to find it now, I should have marked it. There was um, how to make a doll's dress. So it's all kinds of stories and, sorry, it's coming right up in your face. Um, activities for, for children in the days before they had iPads. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was, here we go. How to make a doll's dress. And it was out of a folded piece of paper that you folded in half one way and then in half again the other way. And then you cut it and you cut just a sleeve shape and a little bit of a curve for the hem and a little hole for the neck. And I made a paper thing and cut it and it, it was wonderful. And so, you know, we, I'm keen to try and make an actual dress that way for, a, you know, me, not for a dolly. So when I saw this other one, how to dress an old fashioned doll, and it was 50p. I thought, well, maybe I can get some other fashion ideas from that. So I'm going to go around dressed as an old-fashioned doll in the not-too-distant future. So that's those books. And then I bought this book as well um, in the exhibition in Salisbury. 
which is called The Pocket, A Hidden History of Women's Lives by Barbara Berman and Ariane Fenito. And it's all about pockets, unsurprisingly. But how, you know, what women kept in their pockets, the kind of politics of women's clothing not having pockets. So women made these detachable pockets that would be tied on. And I haven't read it yet, I haven't had a chance to read it. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful book, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Oh, that's quite a... The Return from Margate. Um, yeah, there's lots of old photos, um, not photos, you know, paintings and sketches of women with pockets. Look at that one. I always have the last sheet of my journal in my pocket is the quote from that. So, yeah, that was a little treat because that was a brand new book. Um, so I've shown you my buttons, I've shown you my threads, I've shown you my books, I've shown you everything. So that's it. So that was my trip to England. I had an Indian takeaway um, twice because we had so much we had it warmed up on another night, in case you're interested. I had fish and chips, which was wonderful, and mushy peas, of course. And I had um, a few bottles of Krabby's alcoholic ginger beer which is my favourite drink, um, which is made in Scotland. You can't get it here, anyway. And I had a very good time, caught up with lots of friends, uh, went to exhibitions, did some playing in Chrissy's studio, came back, new joint chair of CQ West. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little catch up. It's a little bit um, different. You saw Fred Fred, if nothing else. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to you joining me next time for more Cloth Tales. Bye bye!